What's up, it's Nez, and hey friendos, welcome back to Mods of Prom Mod Tool. Today we'll be checking out another official mod that just came out, the Poetry Tournament. In case you friendos don't know, Rivals of Aether is kind of like a Smash clone, but they also had a dating sim spin-off called Lovers of Aether, and apparently that's how we got here, weirdly enough. This mod was written as usual by Quinn, with art by Viperfish and Pace, with Forceburn being an OC of Rival of Aether's greater Dan Fornis. Anyway, with that said, let's check it out! One player, second term, short game. Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are you? Let's play as... Brian. <laughs> and we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the Monster Prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our eight most charismatic classmates. Scott Howell, 21. <laughs> A werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who is as cute as she was genocidal. Holly Geist, 22 question mark. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Damon LeVay, 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and the love of fire. Liam the Lion Court, 4XX. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid the fact that he was a truly lovable dork. Zoe, forever! An eldritch cutie who went from endless dating to dark realms to ultimate fangirl. Calculus, a Hewlett Packard 1.0. A library computer had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. And Vera Oblin, 23. A mean self made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear, it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever! All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, TM will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start! If you could put a curse on your worst enemy, what would it do? Let's go with... The curse of always meeting obnoxious people at parties who are super into new fad diets that feel the need to explain them in detail. Which is the coolest mythological creature? The invisible hand of the free market. What criteria would you use to name your children? My name plus the second. And what would be your dream first date? Sexy decompiling. Alrighty, friendos. Let's see what this mod is all about. Week one, morning. Let's go to the library. What's up, shopkeep? Here we go. Poetry competition tickets. Ugh, poetry. Not really my thing, yeah. But hey, I'll sell you these tickets if you don't act like pretentious dick about it. Ah, yes, of course. No Thank you for the tickets, shopkeep. And now, who do we hang out with during lunch? I say no one. Skip! Show me that money. Bye! Week one, evening. Um, sure. Was Kip this again? Hey, stranger. Ugh. Um, sure. And then we skip week two morning. What's up? Bye, shopkeep. I'm so sorry. But we must get to the main event. So it's lunchtime. We can't really go to shopkeep right now. Let's go say hi to Dimitri. Wait, Dimitri is here? Doesn't he have somewhere better to eat lunch? Like an evil banquet or Tim Hortons or something? I can see the confusion writ upon your face, and I can assure you, I am not here to indulge my palate in the delicacy that is. Sloppy monster fries. Dimitri pulls out a clipboard and a stack of pamphlets. Come to the dark I am here on a recruiting mission. Tell me, have you ever considered the benefits of joining the dark side? 
The pay is great, whatever you can steal. We have a killer dental plan, fangs included. And the upward mobility is unbelievable, because your superiors will constantly be killing each other. Plus, you get to go to bed each night, knowing you helped make the world a little less safe. You give Dimitri a disapproving look and point at your dare t-shirt. Oh, you've gone through dark arts resistance education, have you? Well, let me sweeten the deal then. How about a free trial to one dark side perk? Sure, what's the worst that could happen, you ask him to explain? Hmm, the art of monologuing about your evil plans in great detail when you have your enemies trapped in a compromising position, or how to rock a killer cape. Okay, I'm going to explain this once, so pay close attention. The correct way to rock a cape is... And this is very technical, so please focus. The only way to rock a cape is... From the dark like this! I come. Dimitri stands there shirtlessly, his cape flapping in the breeze that no one else can feel. Hmm. Are you taking notes? This has taken me literal centuries to master. Oh, you're taking notes alright, if by notes you mean pictures of sexy shirtless Dimitri overlaid with various compromising Snapchat filters. Hmm. I'm afraid I must conclude today's lesson. I have learned from long experience that rocking a cape for an extended period can cause onlookers' genitals to explode. Until we meet again, my willing acolyte! Oh, and never put your cape in the washing machine. Air dry only. Otherwise it bunches up and looks like an enormous diaper. I'll be and back. now my dramatic exit! Dimitri vanishes in the cloud of purple smoke. As always, you sell the shirtless pics of him to Zoe in exchange for four charm. What? Not even money? Not even money? Okay then. Week two, evening. Sure. Let's go to the gym. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit. Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain two charm. Later you're fishing around in your pocket for a stick of gum, but you find that poetry contest entry ticket instead. Crap, why did you even buy this? Does this mean you're actually responsible for writing poetry now? What a nerd! You need to get rid of that thing now! You start looking for the best trash can to stuff it into before someone else sees. Wait, Nez? Is that a ticket for the 76th annual Monster High School Poetry Competition? I didn't know you were so into poetry. Color me impressed, I'm entering too, haha! <laughs> Obviously, I'm a fellow connoisseur of the art of poetry. It combines antiquity, pretentiousness, and the sound of my own voice, which are all things I love. Tell me, Nez, one poet to another, what are your thoughts on the blah 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 blah? Um, was that even English? Yeah, that blank stare says it all. I figured you were only doing this to get laid. Well, what? Wait, wait! Um, first of all, yes. Second of all, shut the fuck up. It's okay. I knew that no one at this culturally barren wasteland of a school was going to take this seriously, so I hired some outside artistic help from a different school in the district. Oh, here he comes now. What convenient timing. Hey, you must be Forceburn. Hello, friendo. Hey, Forceburn, how are you today? How's Aether High? Aether High is a desolate pit of darkness filled only with tools and fools, and my shadow remains my only ally. Wow, he never turns it off. How do you do it, Force Burn? <sighs> Who's this rectangle scientist, Liam? His blank, thirsty stare reminds me of my father. Ah, this is Nez. He wants to join our poetry team for the contest. What say you, poetry master? Hmm, I don't know how to feel about that. As a dark abandoned spirit and unloved second son, I usually don't play well with others. Just what sort of poet are you, Nez? We already have Liam, who's an insufferable hipster poet. Guilty as charged, my esteemed lion-like friend. Lion? Isn't he supposed to be like a hyena? Okay then. And I'm our doom and gloom emo poet, so those two slots are filled. What will you bring to our team if you join? Well, besides bad puns and maybe some donuts, not much. But you can't let Forceburn know that. The only way out of this lies to dig deeper. Huh. I'm the Sonneteer. Inevitably heartbroken, insufferably horny, fighting sexual repression in iambic pentameter. Or everything I say is a haiku. Watch, it's snowing. On Mount Fuji. We are the motherfucking sonneteer! What? You? A sonneteer? Yeah, right. If that's true, then why don't you put your couplets where your mouth is? Well, if he insists, you start doing what any sonneteer does best. Be horny in rhyme! 
Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Because you're hot as hell! Hey, Liam! Do hallways here normally fill with sweet-smelling rose petals on command? Um, no, I don't think so. The sweet, sultry lute music coming from nowhere is new too. It's working, you keep reciting! And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare. Cause you've got a thick ass and I'm gonna stick it there. Nez, when did you change into those renaissance era clothes? I could swear you weren't wearing a starch collar and pantaloons earlier. Whoa, it's a party in here! Are you guys seeing all these cherubs flying around too? Or are the shrooms finally kicking in? Hey Nez, you look different. I don't know why, but I have the sudden urge to throw laurel leaves at you. Perfect! New muses! You recite. Scott, your eyes are nothing like the sun. They're like deep pools of blue coral, and I also want to lick your pecs. That was cool, I wanna try! Your butt is like a watermelon, your nipples as yummy as Funyuns. Side effects may include hallucinations, death and bunions. Wow, um, that was actually weirdly okay. When did everyone get so good at writing couplets? Oh, is that what we're doing? I was just reading the label on this Percocet I'm planning on popping later. Your friends wander off to write more sonnets. Force Burn stays though and glares at you with a thousand yard glare. You've proven yourself, Nez. I will let you join our team. Truthfully, I am counting on you as much as it cleaves my soul to admit it. I'll need your help to whip the other poetry team members into shape if we want to win. Just the thought of this undertaking makes me want to cry dark anguish tears of darkness and anguish. But we must persevere. I'll see you at poetry practice. And he leaves. You're kind of grateful because this poofy renaissance scholar is itchy as hell. You gain two creativity and one smart. You'll need it for the competition. We are in the poetry competition! We will show off with our mad rhyming skills. But first, week three. Where do we go? Let's go to... The library. I mean class. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and dating gimmicks, you forget attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain two smarts. Afterwards, you head to poetry practice to meet up with Force Burn and Liam. They said something about needing to whip your other teammates into shape, but how bad could they actually be? Hey Nez, you're just in time. I popped nine tabs of LSD and I'm ready to find my muse. Let's get this poetry party fucking started. Uh, Polly, poetry is not a party. It is a serious art form that must be taken seriously. Da, 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 As such, I have already put my poetry serfs in shackles and weighed down the corners of their mouths to prevent them from smiling. Now we can really get into the spirit of things. Right. Ray, I'm so glad we're finally on the sports team together! Let's do some warm-up stretches! What muscles do we need to exercise for poetry? <laughs> oh Scott, you're such a kidder! Poetry isn't a sport, it's a form of literature! The only muscles we'll be using are our minds! Oh really? Well, that's okay, because I can totally read! I've always loved reading, ever since I learned how to when I was... Oh, um, wait, how old are people when they usually learn to read? Uh, see what I mean? I'm not sure where Liam is, but now that you are here, we might as well get started. These three are the only other students who signed up for the poetry competition, so we're stuck with them. We need a rallying strategy to get them into the spirit of the craft. Unfortunately, teamwork and leadership aren't really my forte. My strengths lie in extracting art from the dark, murky nether regions of my soul. So I'm gonna do that, and you work on making your friends the next Shakespeare's before school lets out. Okie dokie then, can't be that hard. Oh yeah, sure, no problem. Time to turn these chumps into chauncers, these morons into Miltons, these dunderheads into Dickinsons. What can you do? Besides more alliteration, that is. Huh. We should shred all the work of Baudelaire into a powerful smoothie. Or make them do 100 poetic push-ups, whatever that means. I like the smoothie idea. Smoothies are great. And luckily you already have a book of Baudelaire's complete works. You keep it next to your bed to raise your get laid potential. You blend up the poems. You also decide to throw in some necessary poetic tools. Semicolons, essence of metaphors, and opium. Cool. Oh, cool. We're making drinks. Here, throw in some whiskey. Hemingway like love that stuff. <laughs> when father makes smoothies, he always adds a bit of truth serum. He says it helps loosen up the war prisoners he's entertaining. Uh -huh. Good idea. Also add some kale. Wait, kale? No pregame drink is complete without protein. You and your friends each chug up a cup of your poetry protein shake. Poetry shake. Uh, it's a working title. Yeah. Wow! This tastes really bad! 
Yes, my eating surf seems to be making strange and pleasant faces while drinking it. Perhaps he's experiencing poetic inspiration. <gasps> oh, nope, that's nausea. I'd better put my vomit surf on deck. Well, nice one, Nez. Now we have the perfect shitty creativity boosting protein shake to drown our sorrows after we lose. <gasps> I'm sorry, did someone say creativity boosting protein shake? <sighs> Whoa, yeah, actually. How long have you been there? <laughs> Vera. Oh, I just arrived. I have this entire school bug to send me an alert whenever a viable business opportunity is spoken aloud so I may snatch it up before anyone else does. You want to buy our protein shake? But it's completely worthless! And poisonous, probably! <laughs> That's for the FDA to decide. But first, I propose we merge our million dollar idea with my vast illegal performance enhancing drugs connections and make a cool mill before we get shut down. You take Vera up in her offer and manage to sell your worthless shake to a bunch of rich trust fund grad students who are desperate to be published in The New Yorker. Before you know it, you're filthy rich! You know, I think this actually might work in a roundabout way. Now that we're rich, we don't have to waste time working real jobs in order to make ends meet. Haha, <laughs> yeah, what kind of loser would work a real job? <laughs> Please like and subscribe. Yeah. Which gives us a lot of time to hone our craft, just like the pros do. I love being a starving artist. Maybe the real poetic talent was a classism we found along the way. You guys have this contest in the bag. You gain two money and one smart. And existential depression. Week 3, noon! Um, Who do we hang out with? Let's hang out with... Liam and Miranda! You find Liam artfully arranging his food while Miranda diligently sorts her silverware. Neither of them is eating, obviously. Have you found it yet? I'm trying, Liam, but finding the perfect silverware for your cafeteria food pick is an art, not a science. How hard could it be? It's just silverware. Just silverware? And I suppose your food and your food pick is just food? No, it's a metaphor for urban consumption in the post-post-post-modern industrialized mega-society. Well, my silverware is a metaphor for... for... Silverware? Yes! Is that not enough? It's more than enough, but can we hurry it along? The lighting is perfect right now, and I don't want to lose it. You're a bit of a silverware aficionado yourself. Maybe you can even speed up the selection process while simultaneously demonstrating your knowledge. Try the pitchfork. It's a fork for taking pictures of. Or, nothing conveys elegance like the taste of a gloating spoon. The picture fork. The picture fork? Miranda, why did you suggest the picture fork? I don't know. It seemed too on the nose, and a fork does not belong on one's nose. But look at this fork! It's so vintage! Slightly tarnished silver, a pineapple filial. Yes, it was manufactured thusly by the palace quaintsmiths. Don't tell me that! It makes it less authentic! Just place it in its correct location for my food pick. Very well. The correct location is across the plate as it left haphazardly from enjoying a delicious meal. So nonchalant! I love it! Liam's so impressed with your selection, he spends hours with you after lunch, picking out filters. You miss class, but it's worth it. And there we go, we had lunch. Time to compete in the poetry competition. Um, and where best to compete at, but the auditorium. That day while rehearsing for the class plays as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figure to a blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two creativity. But who the fuck cares? It's the night of the poetry contest, and you and your friends are ready. Oh god, is anybody nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm so calm, I think I'm gonna throw up. Classic. Relax, Forrest Burn. My poems are gonna dominate. This one's a continuation of Pushkin's work. Ruslan and Lyudmila and Stella are toys. I wrote poems in dog language. It's easier for me to express my emotions that way. This one's called Bow Wow, Woof Woof Bark! I'll recite the first line! Bark Bark Woof! Ow! Bark Woof Bark! Uh, sorry guys! It's too difficult for me to go on! It gets pretty emotional in the third stanza! Oh, Not to worry, friends, our victory is assured! If it isn't, I'll whip out my ultimate poem! Cram Miranda the Poetry Queen or the Murk Kingdom will liquidate your bloodline! Uh, cool, maybe we've got this. I wish I knew where Liam was, but the contest is starting, so we'll need to persevere without him. It's fine. I'm used to being abandoned. Yeah! Nice! Use that angst to our advantage. Let's win the shit! You and your friends actually do pretty well the qualifiers. It's an iambically intense battle, and you barely win against the guy impersonating Kanye West. But somehow, you make it into the finals! Yes! 
Okay, I'm still unclear if that guy was actually Kanye West or not. But either way, we've made it. According to the bracket, our opponent is a mummy called Chad Chaddington and his bros Brad and Tad. Fuck yeah, dude, and we're gonna crush you, says Chad Chaddington, wearing a backward snapback and high-fiving his buddies. We're gonna crush you like an empty PBR can against our foreheads. Great, I hate them already. But if they're the only ones left, we should be able to beat them pretty easily. Oh, hey guys, uh, are you still in the competition? Please say no. Liam, there you are! Where have you been this whole time? It's almost the final round! We need your poetic expertise if we're gonna win this thing! Uh, yeah, this is awkward. But I'm kind of on Chad Chaddington's team now. Wait, what? 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 You betrayed us? So not cool, Liam. Uh, this is disgraceful. You're a poopy head, Liam. Guards, off for of this poopy head, spoopy face. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Miranda, no offing of heads! Surely we could talk this out, or rhyme it out, if you will. Go ahead, Miranda. I'm a freelancing poet now. Even if you kill me, my work will still outlive me. Ah, yes, like a true artiste. Why do you do it, the Lion Court? I thought you were on our side! I was, but then I realized that you guys were actually really good. You were too good. And as much as I wanted to win, I couldn't be seen on such a mainstream winning team. I have a reputation to upkeep, goddammit, of course. Curses, out hipster it again. <laughs> what a wimpy team of losers! Chad Chaddington roars. We've got this shit in the bag. In fact, my dick is so huge and I'm so confident that I'm going to win. I'll even let you losers pick the method of poetry battle. Shit, Nez, I really don't want to lose to these fucking triangle scientists. Can you think of a method of battle that'll make sure we beat Liam and his cronies? Wow, who knew slam poetry could be so high stakes? It's the final battle. Time to beat these mummies into the ground with your poetry skills. Do we write a poem about the most non-poetic topic ever? Unclogging your shower drain or complete the most difficult task known to any poet? Getting a job in your field of interest. Yeah! <laughs> You and your friends scour hiring websites, sending your resumes to anyone who might want a resident poet. Unfortunately, that sort of job is pretty hard to come by. The best you five can do is get jobs as line cooks at a burger joint. Hey, this isn't so bad. It says here we get a free burger every shift. I love being a poet. What the hell, dude? Chad Chaddington says. Being a line cook isn't getting a job in the field of poetry I call bullshit. You're not no, being a line cook is but the first step on our road to poetic fame. The vapid pink one is right. We will work this menial degrading under paying fast food job, and we will go home feeling wretched and burnt out, our souls twisted with weariness and rage. And our dissatisfaction for our lives fuels our craft so that we may write well into the night about the unfairness of it all, and it'll probably be about cheeseburgers. Cool. Yeah, and then we'll finally get fed up and go to a poetry slam to vent our feelings when, gasp, a talent scout is in the audience seeking new content. I mean talent. Yeah, and he'll be so impressed with our awesome play strategy and our poetry slam dunks that he'll offer us a pro contract. What I think the inane job means is that we'll be able to get a book deal, which means... Damn, they're right, dudes! Brad Braddington says. Then they'll totally be pro poets! We've been beat! Fuck, I really thought the literary journal copy editing jobs we got would be the ticket to win! Tad Taddington says while rolling his resume into a joint. Well, if you win some, you lose some. Also, can I get a hit off that? Poet to poet camaraderie? Um, wow! It's as I expected! You guys are all too good to be beaten! Bravo! Do you really mean it? I don't think I've ever been given actual praise before! <sighs> yep. I'm glad I betrayed you all. I couldn't be seen with such mainstream successes as yourselves. See ya. But also, I still sort of look up to you, or whatever. I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your literary journey. Later, posers. I can't believe we did it! What is this feeling? It has the intensity of anguish and sorrow, but without the sadness! Yes. That's happiness, silly! We won! It's time to celebrate! Hooray. Yeah! Let's head to the post-game award ceremony! I love the shiny medals they give out! Hooray! You carried your friends to the MLB circle! That stands for Major Literary Badasses, and you win two smarts and one charm! We are Poetry Champions! Let's go greet Forceburn! Um, sure. 
You don't go to prom, you have an awards ceremony to go to, and your friends to share your trophy with. Oh, Nez! I was hoping to catch you before we went to the awards ceremony! I have something I want to say! I know I'm kinda gloomy, and not always very friendly. I'm a lone lion with no pride, wandering this world alone. But still everyone needs friends. Friendship is a bad lock keeping the true depths of my black box of a soul locked tight. And you, well you've been a really good friend to me. Have we just been friend zoned? Did you just friend zone us? Yeah, you're definitely a better friend than the guy that bailed on the team at the last minute. I, I mean, I'm sorry I acted like a jerk. <laughs> That's okay, Liam. We're all still friends, and we can still accept the trophy together. Once a team, always a team. R really? You'd let me share the win, even after I stabbed you guys in the back. Yeah, sure, why not? I'm used to people abandoning me, so I might as well get used to forgiving them too. And maybe I could get used to having friends too. Maybe. I don't know. Aww, <laughs> oh, y'all are so cute and doofy. Now hurry the fuck up, we gotta get to the ceremony before the champagne is all gone. And the award ceremony is awesome. You recite poetry, you laugh, you cry, you drink like so much champagne. Miranda seizes the first place trophy as property of the Mer Kingdom, but not before Scott pees on it which may or may not result in a territory war in the future. Whatever, not your problem. You all let Liam read off his acceptance speech even though he wasn't technically on your team. You're good sports like that. You went into this to win, but really you're just happy to be surrounded by all your friends. And isn't that what poetry really is all about? Actually, you're not sure. Honestly, this whole experience hasn't really taught you anything much about poetry, but you still managed to have fun. It's snowing on Mount Fuji, winky face. Hey, that was a fun collaboration mod. Force Burn is a really cool dude, aside from being baby's first OC. And those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Vera built the Oberlin Empire into endless greatness. They own a shameless number of companies that's known that they're also into a lot of shady businesses. But no one does anything about it, because I mean, who the hell would stop Vera Oberlin? Due to the obscene amount of fan art she drew, Zoe was taken in by Jim Davis, renowned creator of Garfield, as his protege. Nowadays, Garfield still hates Mondays and loves lasagna, but you can bet he's also into a lot of weird stuff too. Scott became an athlete. Not so long ago, he won a prestigious national award for being the best at doing sports. For those three weeks, the Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start.
And that was the Poetry Tournament mod, a collaboration between Monster Prom and Rivals of Aether. Give these friendos a follow and if you enjoyed their mod, leave a comment down below and like and subscribe so we can grow our channel together. Also hit that notification bell to always stay up to date with our videos. But until the next episode of Monster Prom, my name is Nez and thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye friendos!